Good morning. It's 6.29. I woke up. I got into the park at 6.13. And uh, it was really nice. There's hardly anybody on the road. I saw a fox on the side of the road. He was just standing there looking around. A couple of deer. And there were several bison just walking down the middle of the road. So you got to like walk, drive really slowly and hoping they veer away. But they're actually really smart. I think they're used to it. One was heading straight towards me on my lane. And I, as I came, he just kind of veered, went to the other lane, and I just passed him. Pretty uh, trained, I guess, is the word. I don't know. But I just pulled into Pebble Creek, and there are three cars in front of me. Let's hope at least four campsites become available today. It's 6.30. They say at 7.30 the available listings go up. Um, we'll see. Two cars and a RV, or maybe that's one car and a truck pulling a camper. I couldn't tell as I pulled up. So let's hope there's at least two or three. We'll just sit here because everyone else is sitting here. That's one of the big downsides is right now is prime wildlife viewing time. Like the sun's not up yet. It's cool. The grizzly bears are active from dawn in the dawn time and I, we looked up dawn and it's like two hours before sunrise to sunrise and it's a little past sunrise now although because it's so thick the clouds are so thick um haven't seen the sun yet but yeah you, i'm gonna have to sit here for an hour it's prime animal viewing but i'm gonna sit here hope for a campsite and uh, that way i could like take a nap here during the day and I could head out and then stay out well past dusk and then like come back at 9 30 or 10 o'clock or something and then uh then I'll have a spot I don't have to like worry about competing for a spot like if I was gonna look even for a dispersed site I tried to find it by five or so which isn't good but and then tomorrow morning I could also wake up super early and take off because we are just like just east of the Lamar Valley Trailhead and the river is right across the street. It's a great campground. I mean, I can see why it's so popular. <laughs> tough, tough spot. But I think I'm two or three, so, or three or four on, in line. One thing I forgot to add, it is Thursday morning, so it's not a weekend. Although I have a feeling with places like this in such a popular park, it doesn't matter if it's a weekend or a weekday because everyone's here on vacation, mostly from other states as well. So I don't know if it makes a difference, but it was quite busy. And yesterday, oh my gosh, it was so busy. So many people driving 10 to 15 miles below the speed limit, staring off, sticking their arms out the window, pointing. It's just so slow. People braking for no reason. And you can always tell, you could see someone be like, they're going to turn, but they're not going to turn signal. They're just going to brake first all the time. Horrible. Well, I walked up to look for any signs and there was a sign up there that said Thursday, walk in, like walk in tent sites and RV sites, five available. So we don't know. There are five tent sites and like six RV sites. Um, I could stay at a tent site. I mean, I just need a place to park the car. I don't need a table or a firing or anything. So... There are five and there are three vehicles in front of me. So there's, there's four of us here. So hopefully we're good. I see, I think the camp post just got out, but I think we're good. And I'd be a great camper here because I'm going to take off super early tomorrow morning. So it'd be another campsite available tomorrow. So whoever wants it, but looking good. Although we're still gonna have to sit here for another half hour, at least 45 minutes. All right, I got a campsite, campsite 20. There were five people pulled up. I was number four, five sites. So, and two of them were RV, three of them were RV. So it worked out. I got an RV site, pretty level too. There it is. I checked with the bubble meter and it was zero, zero. So it's perfectly level actually. Site 20, I have neighbor right behind me, but that's fine. I'm gonna, I was gonna use the bathroom here, but it's busy and there's a lot of people here. So I'm gonna take off and use the bathroom as you leave because there's nobody there, so, and dump off some garbage. But, time to go looking. Hey, I'm at the Lamar Valley Trailhead. I'm just gonna hike the trail that Tina are gonna, and Crunch are gonna come up. So I'm just gonna go down for two hours and come back, maybe three hours. We'll see, I got everything I need. Look like a total geek. 
but uh let's hope we see something there's where we are and i'm hoping to go down the right side because there's a footbridge and then go down this way maybe until about capri C patrol cabin and come back maybe to the intersection miller creek who knows Well, that was fun. Those two are behind me. There are several bison back there, but there was one there and there's one on the right and we had to walk by. But they, don't, they didn't seem to care at all. This guy kind of kept an eye on me on the side. But I did the usual. I just looked ahead, looked down a little, don't look at them. That way I look more like a casual stroller. Defenseless, harmless. The trail has been like this. Really nice packed dirt. All I see are shoes horses and bison nothing else a lot of horses we're coming along the trail right now and there are two bison to the right but i guess they're far enough away there's a junction out there i think left is where i'm gonna go down lamar river towards miller creek that's the way tina and crunch should come if they took the correct path check it out i finally got to see one Oh, you can't see if I put my foot there. Hold on. That's definitely a wolf print. After this one, I see a few more. They're on top of the human prints. Yeah, that one right there is definitely on top of the human print. So things are looking up. Maybe they walked this way since the last hikers. I don't know. Look, things are looking up though. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. They're, I don't see any human prints on top of them yet. Unless it was squarely on top and it got destroyed. But they're going this way. It's another good one. Big. Whole bunch of them. Nice. Gosh, they're so big. Let's hope they make a left at the junction right here, not a right. The two people that were behind me didn't seem to follow me. Maybe they will. But a uh, bunch of bison back there. <laughs> But up ahead, there was a pronghorn and a baby pronghorn with the mom. They're actually walking towards bison now, but I'm now actually in the back country of Yellowstone. Not super back country, only like a mile by myself. Keep turning around, making sure nothing. Oh, the pronghorn baby, they're not moving away from me very quickly. Let's get some video. Now there's a trail, and there's that guy, but he's giving me the eye, so I'm going to go to the left. It looks like there's a path. Maybe not a path, but easily walkable. But the trail kind of swerves towards him, and I don't want him to get the idea that I want to walk towards him. So I'll go this way. Are you? Where's the badger? Making a run for it. Did he not hear me all this time before? Oh, he's in the bushes. He's hiding. Welcome to the Lamar Valley area. You can see the car is far away. I'm not using a wide, wide angle lens here, it's just normal. Yeah, I don't know if you hear the males grunting. I don't know if you, it's a proper word. But there's a bunch over here again. I think there's a bunch right over this hill. I hear them. Look at that. Males chasing after the females. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
Is she receptive? I don't know. Yeah, I figured as a tiny little human, I shouldn't be making grunting noises. I just saw the backs of all the bison out there. There's a huge group of them, herd of them. Uh, I don't know how far to the right they go, but they go far to the left. I'm gonna swing right, see if there's an opening. I'd show you, but the sun's right behind them. It's hard to see. Can you make them out? I'll go this way. Oh, okay. It ends there, but... Oh no, it doesn't end. There's still a whole bunch of them on the right. Uh, I guess I'm stuck. I hope they don't come this way. I don't have a way around. All the way on the left, they're all over too. It's gonna take Tina and Crunch forever to get through this trail just because of all the bison, I think. They're actually coming down the trail. I wonder if people are scaring them. I'll sidetrack. Three through hikers look like they skirted all the way around straight ahead of me. I think I recognize them. There's some backpackers over there. Not a Martina and Crunch, but uh, looks like they're looking for a way out too. Let's zoom into them. Big packs, pretty clean, not through hikers, but yeah, they're looking for a way through. It looks like they're making a run for it in between the hill there. Little do they know there's two more right behind the hill that they can't quite see. They'll see them soon enough. Critters keep looking at me. Yeah, yeah, go around. Oh, this guy's smelling her butt. Oh, she's peeing and he's smelling it. I gotta get the zoom lens for that. I'm trying to convince these guys not to come towards me, but fortunately they're starting to go down a little. This big guy here too. Yeah, go down. And it's amazing being able to see just herds, like huge herd of bison just walking around down there. And there's some backpackers right there. And there's actually the hikers that were behind me. There was a couple, one had a three week old baby with her for some reason. And uh, a couple of families, it looks like. I thought there were only one family, but uh, one, a couple of families. They turned around earlier because there was a bunch of bison in the way, but I guess uh, we walked through, so they thought they could make it as well. So, um, in retrospect, I probably should have gone to the right there and gone around because they're swinging through. They're still going through. I might just go up on top of that hill up there and look around because uh, Tina might be coming... Well, she'll be coming from that way, but she might come on this side of the hill or the other side of the hill, depending on a bison situation. I think I'm going to make a run for it. I'm going to go left of these two. I think I have space enough where I can then cut right and head towards that hill. I got to wait till the baby moves, though. I don't want to spook the mom here. Keep going! There you go. Yeah, move down the hill. Oh no, another big guy's coming this way. Criminy. I'm not getting a gap. I think I made it through most of it. I came down the hill because up the hill they kept coming towards me. And uh, some of them were really looking at me. So I thought I'd come down. There was a big enough gap because a whole bunch of them started running before I came down. So I squeezed through. And I know there's a couple more up ahead, but uh, let's hope it's easier to get through those. Yeah, there's the hill straight ahead. Here's a baby bison. Or a female. I guess a female. Skull and looks almost like hip bone. Lower portion of the hip bone. Hmm, that thing is big. I don't know if you can make them out, but by that bright orange diamond, there's the two of them. Taking a break, I'm guessing they're letting their feet dry off before they continue on because they just forded the river. But here I come. All right, caught up to the two. They were taking a break and drying off their stuff, and now we're heading off back to the car. 
Crunch hasn't seen any bison until just recently. But I told him there's gonna be a lot coming up. And he's gonna be cursing him soon enough. He's gonna be everywhere. We're hiking to the trailhead, but behind us, it's really opened up. You can see the rain. It's kind of coming this way, kind of towards the left, but we've been hearing a lot of thunder. And there are dark clouds coming on our side. And as we were hiking, lightning came from those clouds two miles away from the sound, straight down. So we're trying to get out of this meadow and uh, more thunder. Hopefully we get back to the car. We might all just sit in the car for a while until these storms blow over. We'll see. We're heading straight, straight towards the clouds that one bit of lightning came from, but most of the lightning is from behind us. Fortunately, they're going that way. Eventually, it's clear now. Probably now, but not later. Behind us are the darker clouds. <laughs> if we're lucky, maybe one will go as I'm recording. Probably won't be lucky. Yeah, nothing. Boring. Those are nice and dark. The rain looks further away though. This guy was coming right at me. Fortunately, he decided to go on the right side of the car, so. Big boy. Look how close everybody is to him. This is crazy how close they're standing next to it. We're stuck in a bison traffic jam again. I would give you hints on the best way to drive through this, but it wouldn't matter because everybody else in front just drives like an idiot or they're actually stopped taking pictures when they have a chance to go. So you're pretty much just stuck all the time. Not much you can do. The only thing you can do is stay really close to the car in front of you and that way no bison can get in between so if he gets through you get through so if everybody did that a whole chain of cars would get through but uh, people don't do that I guess we're still stuck here it's been a long time check out this little is it a Gladys fly thing I've never even seen these till this year but I've seen these all over and oh they look exactly like the flies I'm gonna have to google them see what they eat and stuff because fly fishermen use those all the time, and uh, so they must be plenty of them if all the trout eat them. Yep. Fortunately, Tina and Crunch, they did this roadwalk here, um, but they didn't get stuck by something like this. Because something like this, it's tough. Like, we thought about like hiding behind a car, but they're all over sometimes. Once you get a mask going through in between all the cars, there's no clear spot. It's a tough one. Like this car right here. He's not going. There's nobody near him. He can totally go. But because of that, everyone else behind him is stuck. There's no reason that he's not going except to take pictures. And that is the traffic jam. There's absolutely no reason. He just sat there. What's odd is though, he probably sat in his traffic jam for like a good 20 minutes and he had ample opportunity to take pictures, but why stop after? It doesn't make any sense. It's so weird. I don't get people. I don't get people at all. It just People just don't make any sense at all. I found if you drive aggressively, like you get really close to them, they'll move. It's not like they just stay there until you tap them. They, they move. So it's weird that so many people are just so scared of them. I think it's 8:48 now, and it's getting quite dark. I can barely see anything under the trees, any kind of shade with the binoculars. 
and the camera's not going to have any better time at all. The binoculars are a little stronger magnification. So I think I was going to stay out till, this is the dusk time, but I don't see anything. I was going to stay out a little later, but I knew that at some point I wasn't going to record anything or see anything. So I'm just going to head back to the campground, go to sleep really soon because it's 848. And then tomorrow morning, I'll get out early, like when it's dark. So that way, as it gets brighter, I should be able to see things. And I'm thinking about hiking down to Lamar Valley Trail again, but branch right instead of going left where I did today. So I'll try that tomorrow. I'll try to be there by, I think, 5.30 would be best. We'll see. We'll see. That's it might still be pretty dark. So I'll get up at 4.30 for real this time and get out there. I think that's probably better than just linger around, lingering around in the dark right now. So let's go back and hope nobody took my campsite yet. I've been gone from that thing for 13 hours today. I didn't even leave anything. 